Hi everyone, welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. That's me, and today I'm talking about quokkas. Now, quokkas are, I guess you would call them a small kangaroo, but they're quite unique. Now, they used to be found on the West Australian mainland, down in the southwestern corner of Western Australia, and there's still a few there. But their safe haven is Rotnest Island, and it's offshore, as the name suggests, it's an island. It's called Rotnest because the island was found by Dutch explorers in the 1600s, and they called it Rotnest Island, which in English means rat's nest. They thought quokkas were rats. They were very wrong. But this is a full-grown quokka. Now, they're quite small, and they fall in what's called the critical weight range, which is between half a kilo and five kilos. Now, if you have a look at them, their camouflage is basic, but it's effective. They're brown and they blend in with the bush. They've got those little black beady eyes and their eyesight is average, not too good, not too bad. A keen sense of smell, their ears are really good for hearing. They've got little hands that are quite dexterous, so they can grab their food and bring it to their mouth and eat it. And like all of the kangaroos, they have long feet. They're in the macropod family, which means large footed. They have a long foot and they hop, just like other kangaroos, a long tail for counterbalance, and that's a quokka. A quokka's shelter, just like you see them doing now, they'll find somewhere under a hollow log, back in a bush, just where they're protected, safe from predators, and can sleep. A quokka habitat is called coastal heath. Now, it's really thick bush full of banksias and Australian plants. They live in quite dense undergrowth. Now, that protects them from their predators, but in actual fact, quokkas are now endangered and their main refuge is that offshore island, Rotnest Island. Their main threat is the feral fox and the feral cat that was introduced by Europeans. And this might have worked many years ago as protection from predators, from Tasmanian devils or native quolls that are carnivorous marsupials. But when you hide like that, you are no match for a fox or cat. The quokkas will live in small groups little family groups, just like you're seeing here now. Um, you won't see hundreds of them, but just like that, it's pretty normal. You might have a mum, a dad, a joey, maybe even last year's joey, in a loose social group. Our quokkas eat vegetation. Now it could be fresh grass, grass roots, some leaves on young plants, even a few flowers, if they're flowering at the right time of year. Now here's a fun fact for you. A couple of years ago, quokkas were voted the happiest animal on earth. And that's because when you look at them, they've got a little smile and they're pretty happy. Now, I really like that because when you're a conservationist and you care about animals, you need people to love an animal. And the world loves quokkas. And you know what that means to me? That quokkas are already endangered. But if things got even worse for quokkas, the world is gonna care. People love them because they're the happiest animal on earth. And so every time you kids do a project on an animal, you learn something about that animal. Today it's quokkas. And every time you do that, I know that now a little part of you knows more about quokkas. That's a good thing. The quokkas are marsupials. They have a pouch. So what happens is a male and female mate, and like all marsupials, the pregnancy is really short, like 30 days. And when humans have babies, we're pregnant for nine months. And quokkas are pregnant for one month. But when that little joey is born, it's like a little jelly bean. And it climbs up into the pouch and it attaches to a little teat. Now teat is like the nipple and it suckles from that. And it grows into a little quokka in the pouch. Now when it's first born, it's all pink. And its eyes are covered over with skin and its ears are folded down. It has no fur. But as it grows, its fur grows and its eyes open and its ears lift off its head and it turns into a little quokka. Two bits of homework. The first one is a drawing. I'd like a life cycle of a quokka. Now let's start with two males fighting. And they don't fight like big grey kangaroos where they stand tall. But we've got two little male quokkas that are grabbing onto each other and kicking each other. And then we've got mum and dad. And then we've got a joey being born. And then we've got it in the pouch. And then we've got it standing next to mum. Please do that. And the next one is, so quokkas live in Western Australia. I would like another small marsupial, 
a species of kangaroo or wallaby or potteroo or bedong. I'd like one that lives in um, two different states in Australia, maybe another one in South Australia, another one in the Northern Territory or another one in Queensland. There's so many. Can you tell me two other species of marsupial, macropod, kangaroos or wallabies that live in two different states? The quokka's in Western Australia, so it can't be in Western Australia. Thanks for watching again. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching everyone. Now, the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment, like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us and hopefully you. Now, if you like what you've seen or wanna show me your homework, just put it into the comments. This is what I do, connecting people with nature and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.